Today's whole topic that we want to talk about, and I really want to get through to your guys, is a lot of you guys, your eyes go on to the moving averages. It's actually not as hard as you think, but it's not as simple as you think. It's because we're not looking at it from a single viewpoint. We're looking at it from a multi-view point, and I'm going to explain that today. So is it okay if we jump straight to the charts and we get into this right away? You guys okay with that? Okay, okay. Now, let's find something tricky. Okay, well, let's, we'll find something tricky. But before I find something tricky, let me show you um, some tips and tricks on something easy. Let me show you some tips and tricks on something that's a little bit more difficult. And then we'll wrap it all up and we'll do example after example after example. Yeah, does, does that make sense? Everyone okay with that? Can you give me a thumbs up, like, fire, whatever you guys do, throw in all your emojis that you can into the chat. So I know you are good with this and we proceed. Okay, those of you guys, uh, while you guys are doing that, those of you guys who are new here, don't forget to subscribe, like, hit the bell icon. All that stuff is algorithm stuff. It keeps them happy. Uh, and that way I get to perhaps see you again or you see me again, right? Okay, good, good, good. Let's get started. So we're going to start with, we're going to start with something a little bit more um, simplistic, okay? Let's start with the idea of why MAs, okay, why MAs? And more importantly, I thought you hate indicators, Naveen. What's up with the MAs? What are you trying to say, right? It's like, why do you have, why do you have MAs if you clearly tell me you don't like indicators? I'll explain. When I look at MAs, I don't use the MAs to make a trading decision in terms of entry and exit, not like that. Okay, so it's not like, okay, prices have come back down to my MA and it's reversing back from the MA, hit the buy. Okay, not like that, not like that, not like that. So I want to make that very, very clear for you guys. That's not what I'm doing. Okay, is that clear, right? Is that clear? Okay, good. Now, let's talk about why MAs are important. So what is MAs? If we open up that word, MAs, it represents moving averages, right? Moving averages. What that means is let's say I'm going to give you the parameters of my moving averages. So the, the, the one that's super close to the price, that's 20. Okay, 20 EMA. Okay, the one that's a little bit further away is the 50 EMA. Okay. And the one that's furthest, which is down here, is the 200 EMA. I bet you guys probably can't see the 200. Let me change the color on that. Um, I'll make it a little bit darker so you guys can see it. Okay. Yeah, now it should be visible. Okay. There's the 200 at the bottom. You should be able to see it now. Okay. So why these numbers? There is no science behind it where it's like, you know, you know how sometimes you go and you you consume information from online, which I I, I am totally against. But at the same time, uh, you got to do what you got to do. And I am not against that ever. I, I love the underdog story, just like the next guy. And I always root for the underdog because it's more fun to read those stories. You know, it's more fun for me. So um, that means I'm rooting for all of you guys. If there are some larger players in here, as we always have, congratulations and also welcome back. It's always good to have um, some senior traders uh, in here as well, whether you're working for a bank or a hedge fund. Uh, it's always appreciated to have you in the room. Now, when we're looking at um, moving averages, the whole idea is if you set the moving average, these are EMAs, exponential moving averages. So let me show you the settings of this. Okay, here's a setting. So input, you can see the length is set to 20. The source is set to close. Da, da, da. If you have this on the recording and you're watching this in the recording, you can just simply hit pause if you want to do it. Like I want to do it exactly the way Naveen does it, right? You can do that if you want to. But what I'm more interested in is, do you understand why I'm doing all this, right? If that clicks, then everything clicks, okay? So let me now explain this. So 20 EMA close. What that basically means is whatever time frame you choose, whatever time frame you choose, 
your 20 EMA will, will give you an average of the last 20 candles. Okay, so if your, your EMA here is the last 20 from there, your EMA here is the last 20 from there. Does that make sense? Okay, now the one about 50, therefore the one that's 50, it means the last 50 candles from that moment. The 200, the last 200 candles from that moment, okay? So what this essentially does, it gives me a insight into the trend, okay? Where are we headed? Okay, now, how many of you guys are here for the very first time in my webinar? Can you guys say first? And for the, those of you guys who have been here a couple of times, write down the number, how many times you've been to my webinars. If you've been here more than five plus times, write down the number five with a plus sign. So I know you've been here. Uh, more than five times. Someone put 10,000. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, I and, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know, the, the fact that you guys have this much loyalty to Urban Forex is why I do this thing. I want you to put yourself in my shoes and be like, why even do this? Right? Many times students ask me, it's like, well, if you know how to trade, why do you teach? You know, instead of trying to fight that question, I actually accept that question. I'm like, you know what? He's right. Why should I teach? Why am I wasting my time? It's because I used to be in your position exactly. Hard, good information is hard to come by. But there's plenty of information out there. How do you know what works? That's the hard part. And you, I don't have 30 years to sit here and say, okay, let's look at this information. Let's do it one by one. Oh, that doesn't work. This information one by one. Oh, that doesn't work. I don't have that kind of time. And then if I look at reviews, I don't know if some reviews are real or fake these days as well. So I, I don't know what to, what to rely on. That's why in every one of my webinars, what's the one thing I say? Don't take it. Don't take my word for it. Try it. Try it. Start on a demo, please, before you take it live. But try it. You'll see it starts to click. And then one webinar to the next, to the next, it starts, you know, it starts clicking. And you're like, I get it. I get it. I understand the game now. I understand what is our role as a trader? Okay, let's get into it. So all these moving averages are, it gives me an insight into the trend. Now, why trend? So some people might say, well, um, well, that's because Naveen is a trend trader. I'm a range trader. I'm a channel trader. I trade Fibonacci. I trade support and resistance. I trade... X, Y, and Z xylophone. Okay, whatever it is. Can I ask you guys all one question? Let me move this to the side. I'm going to ask you guys one question. Let's go super back to the basics without me getting into the basics. I just want you to take a moment all the way back and understand your core response to this question I'm about to ask you. Who do you think moves the market? Answer that question hand on heart. Is it you who moved the market? Is it your friend? Is it your neighbor? Is it a collection of your friends and neighbors? Who moves the market? If the word that comes to your mouth is big boy, that is a genuine truth inside, right? It's an internal truth that you know. If that's the case, then I like to ask the question, if the price right now is 92.40, I like to ask the question, how did it reach 94.50, for example? How does the price go up? Who is moving that? It tells me there's a larger player involved. I like to service and work with the larger players because the commission and profits that they share are larger. I don't like dealing with this kind of nonsense I don't like dealing with the little guy and scraping pennies. That's a poor man's game. I don't like that. I don't like scraping pennies off. Of, let me see what I can get, you know, golem style, you know, like precious, you know, let me inch by inch, like coin by coin. Like, no, no, come on, come on. If you're going to waste time, go watch Netflix. Okay, at least you'll have fun. At least you'll have fun. But if you want to sit in front of your computer, let's do it right 
Let's do it right. And you better get paid. You better get paid. And you should accept next, uh, nothing less than that. You understand? You got to have a little bit more respect for yourself. If I'm going to do something, I need to understand, wait, what's the game? What's the game am I playing? If I understand what the game is and I know the simple, solid truth that the market is moved by the larger players, then why don't I study the larger players instead of playing? You know, when price comes a little bit above this price and I grab the liquidity and then I golem this thing like that ah, precious. Come on. Like, come on. What are you going to do? Scalp for the rest of your life? You want to play that game and fight against algorithms? You can. Tell me, since you've been doing that, how has it been working out? You can lie as much as you want, but the reality hurts, doesn't it? Let's get into this a little bit deeper. Let's get into this a little bit deeper. Okay? Now, if we say prices are starting to go from here, they're starting to go higher I'm aware that the larger player has a demand saying, I really want this and I'm willing to pay more, 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 more. That means there is no sellers and there's so much buyers. Okay. Okay. Whatever the sell that was being offered, the buyer says, I'm willing to pay more. Whatever you gave me, if you give me two and I buy four, does that work? Is, does that equal out? Think of that logic. If you give me two and I want two, then the net is zero, right? You're giving me two, I want two, the net is zero. Price will not move. You're giving me two, I want 60. Now you'll say, I, I don't have it. The other guy might say, I have two, but I'm not giving you for this price. Uh-uh. I'm giving it to you for $10 more expensive. Someone else will come in and say, you know what? Forget that Naveen guy. I'll pay you 20. Give it to me. The next guy comes in. Forget that. You have two, right? I'll buy it from you. Give it to me at $50 a piece. That's how the price rises. You understand that? It's a game of give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. But if you understand that game, then you understand a movement like this is a sign that the larger player still wants it, still being the keyword, still wants it. Okay? Okay, if he still wants it because he didn't get enough, okay, he's not filled. He didn't get enough. He wants more, but he's not getting his hands on it because no one has it. This tells me that if I'm on my 60 minutes, it tells me the demand of the larger player is still interested. They're still willing to buy whatever discounts come in. This tells me from a higher time frame, the big dogs, they're still interested whatever comes in. Now, how many of you guys look at this and say, you know, well, if we come below the MAs like that, shouldn't we be selling? Well, that's a very simpleton way to think. And that's a very logical way to think, but it's a very simplistic way. You have to think about it this way is if it's selling, there is a larger player looking at this and saying, oh, discount, discount. Come, come, come. Give me, give me, give me. You, you understand what I'm saying? So what happens is by having these multiple time frames, I'm not looking to trade using the multiple time frames. It gives me a visual understanding of saying, what's going on? Who wants this? And if this time frame no longer wants this because it because it's falling through the MAs, but I see an inclined MA from the higher time frame, it gives me an idea of saying, I don't think the sell will last long. It can't because it's going to be swooped up. It's going to get bought. So I position myself accordingly. Does that make sense? Is it making sense? Is it clicking? Now, if I'm on the one hour, okay, let's do a little bit, little bit of uh, fun stuff for you. If I'm on the one hour, from one hour to four hour, how many candles is that? How many multiples is that? Four times, right? 
from one hour to four hours is four times. So if you have a 20 EMA, you multiply that by four times is what? 60? It's very close to this line. So I know what the four hour is doing and how they're trending without going to the four hour manually. If I'm on the four hours and I do that same multiple for the daily, I can know what the daily is thinking without actually going to the daily. So this tells me just by looking at this screen, I know what my time frame is trying to do and I know what larger players are trying to do. Does that make sense? This tells me what kind of demand is there in the market for this product? What kind of demand is there in the market for this product? When I use the word product, I always want you to think it's not New Zealand yen. Change that to anything. You can call it Apple, NVIDIA. You can call it uh, USDT. You can call it BTC. You can call it apples, oranges. It's the same logic. Price goes up because someone wants it. How price goes up tells you how much someone wants it. Does that make sense? So many of you guys, if you guys look at this and say, Oh, look, there is a higher high. Higher high, higher low means uptrend. How many of you guys know that information? Simple. Higher high, higher low, right? Okay. Here's a higher high, higher low. Okay. This one. Here's the next one. Uh, higher high, higher low. Here's the next one, higher high, higher low in progress. Now, you see all of these things, right? Just like the next guy, but I want you to take the details out of this. When you have the higher high, how long does it take to make that higher high? That's eight hours long or more, right? I didn't, I didn't count the candles, but I'm assuming eight hours. How long did it take this time? Oh. Five hours. How long did it take this time to make a higher high? Oh, three hours. You got to observe these things. The faster prices rise, the more immediacy they're looking. Just because it makes a new high doesn't mean anything on its own. It's a new high and the speed and the time it took to do that. That gives you information. That gives you actionable information that you can say, that means something. That means something, okay? That means there's high demand. Now, for example, all that stuff, so far, educationally, does that make sense educationally? If you make a higher high and it goes up slow versus it goes up fast, it tells you how much demand there is, right? Educationally, that makes sense? Now, I'm going to explain this in a way where it's not chart basis, where you can actually relate to it and be like, ah, got it, got it. Okay, now take a look at this. Okay, here we go. Now, if you want to buy, I don't know, I always do this. If you want to buy this pen, okay, if you want to buy this pen, and the price right now is $1, Okay, that's the highest point is $1 and the price drops to 50 cents, 50 cents. Okay, now, if all of you guys in this room start fighting for this pen, because I only have one, and some of you guys are like, you know what, I'll give you 60 cents. Some says, you know what, forget that guy, I'll give you 62 cents. You know what, I'll give you 62.5 you know what? I'll give you 70. You know what? I'll give you 71 cents. Tell me the speed that it's going up. Tell me the speed you notice, the intensity of the buy. Not so strong, right? Perhaps this pen is not of desire. Let me switch it up right now and ask you guys this thing. Okay. Now, from all of you guys fighting, you see interest in this pen and you say, I'll give you 70 cents. 
The next guy says, I'll give you a dollar 45 cents. Both situations that I just drew, they're making a higher high, but the intensity of this one, you can feel how quickly the price went as a higher high. That means there's a lot of people here that want this again. If you can get one more of these, they're going to run over each other to get it. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Is it clicking now from the educational side to, ah, okay, okay. That's why it happens like that. Like, click, click, you know? Is it happening? Is it now? Do you make sense? So just because it's a higher high, it's not just the simplistic, oh, higher high means uptrend. Therefore, I must buy. How do you buy? Do you buy aggressively? Do you buy conservatively? It paints a picture. It prepares you in a different style each time. Does that make sense? Now, let's take a look at something a little bit more complex, okay? So far, so good. We talked about the easy stuff. This is all one directional. How easy is that, right? Now, what I like to do is this. I'm going to tell you guys ahead of time now that I'm going to trick you guys in this example coming up ahead. You guys okay with that? I don't want you to be like, oh man, you tricked me, Naveen. I, 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 I walked into that one. I'm just telling you ahead of time that I'm about to trick you, okay? Because I want you to understand where the mind actually gets tricked when, when dealing with uh, moving averages and the flow of the market and so on and so forth. Okay, ready? Let's uh, let's move on. Here we go. Let's take a look at pound yen here. Okay. Let me double click here, double click there. Sorry, let me move it a little bit bigger. And let me bring you onto the screen around here. Okay. Here's the part where it gets difficult for many people. Is this an uptrend? Is this a downtrend? Is this a sideways market? Let's solve this once and for all, because many of you guys always have this question of, well, Naveen, how many candles exactly should I look far back? Because according to this, we're in a range. According to this, we're in a downtrend. But according to this, we're in an uptrend. My head is going to explode. What? Which one is it? How many of you guys in here suffer from that? That, you know, when I see this, I get confused and I'm all kind of over the place. How many of you guys in here have, have that? Be honest with me because it's for you. This training is for you. So be honest, right? Okay. Some of you guys are saying slightly upside. You guys are saying uptrend. Um, Dubai, you're saying you need to do, know the direction one way. Okay. Okay. Okay, some of you guys are now, now you guys are saying, yeah, this this uh, causes you confusion. Some of you guys are saying, me, 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 right? Okay. It's a very common thing to experience. It's a very common thing to experience. And let's fix that today, once and for all. Shall we do that? Well, we're 32 minutes into the web. Well, well, sorry. You guys are 32 minutes into the web. I came late, so sorry about that. Like, So we're like 25 minutes into the webinar. We'll go five minutes over the hour just to make up for that time. Sorry about that again. But let's talk about this, yeah? Let's fix this once and for all. Why I have multiple MAs is to sort of give me the guiding eye. Give me the guiding eye. Ready? I want all of you guys to focus on this. Do some of you guys understand the guy who started it? Now, I'm getting into a little bit course material from Urban Forex, but... How many of you guys understand the word when I say the guy who started it? The guy who started it. Okay, those of you guys who don't know what that means, let me briefly explain it quickly. Okay? Now, if you have a movement that goes up, green, 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 green. I'm always interested in, did we break into a new high? And if I see, yes, we broke into a new high from this was the highest point, And now we broke into a new high. I look for who's the guy who started that movement. And I would come down and say, oh, it started here. This is the guy who started it. Okay. If we say 
we're 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 going down but did we break this lowest point no we're going down did we break this low no still buyer's market we're going down did we break this low? no still buyer's market and then when it does this it goes pow and now we're on poking our heads out onto the other side who's the guy who started it then we say there Anyone who can make a lower low or a higher high becomes person of interest. Put it that way. Remember, what did I ask you in the beginning of the webinar? Who moves the market? If you truly say the big boys move the market, I want you to imagine from the big boys itself, the category of the big boys, who can make a new high or a new low? Oh, that guy must be loaded, right? So bring bring them bring that individual into your attention. I'm saying individual to make it easy. You know, there's probably a whole bunch of science behind how many people there are and how much money there is. But for the sake of simplicity, we're like, oh, that that dude, that one dude must be super powerful, or do this. You know, he, them, they, it, she, whatever pronoun you want to give it, super powerful individual, right? Okay. Now, if we see that situation, right? And they're hitting a down right here. And then it stops. It stops right there. When this thing goes up, is it a buy? No. Did we take out the guy who started it? No. And it comes down. Is it selling again? No. Did we take out the guy on the bottom? No. And it goes up. Did we take out the guy? No, it's not a buyer. And then it comes down, makes a new low. New low. Who made that new low? It started here. The engine started here, here. So that's where our anchor becomes. We're like, we're glued to that. We're like, I see you, big man. I see what you've done. You naughty, naughty. I see what you've done, right? So you, you know who's there, okay? So you're like, aha. Uh -huh. Okay, now, so far so good, right? Does that make sense? The guy who started it in a simplistic way, did this make sense to you guys? I know I explain it much more in, in thorough and examples in the course, but for those of you guys who do not know it, what I'm about to show you next, I need you guys to know this to do that. So, you know, Merry Christmas you know, or, or Happy New Year, whatever it is, like whatever you like, it's, it's my gift to you. Enjoy. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. You guys understand this. Let's move on further. Now, keep this stuff in mind, what I just explained. Keep that thing in mind. Now, whenever price is moving in a particular direction and prices begin to crash and I see the price on the other side of the MA, it goes on the other side of the 20, it goes on the other side of the 50. Why is it going down? Is it a selling market? Is it a selling market? Am I supposed to sell? What, what am I supposed to do? Okay, watch this very carefully. Do not take your eyes off of this. Ready? The same time, I'm also aware from a larger view, the 200 candles, which means from a larger time frame's perspective, they're still in an uptrend, which means whatever that down is, they're like, meh, we'll buy it. Let it come. Now, does that mean if it touches it, I should buy it? No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It gives me a sense of investigate. Don't do anything. Don't say, I don't know if this is a sell, if this is a buy, I quit. Don't do that either. It means investigate. And I'll show you some tricks on how to investigate it to keep your focus short and easy. Yeah, well, I'm going to give you some tips on how to do this. Okay, now, if I put a line right here for you, okay? Now, look at this. The guy who started it, that's a seller. The guy who start, that's a seller. The guy who start, that's a seller. The guy who started, oh, that's a seller. It keeps coming lower. It's a seller's market, right? That's what we see. It's a seller's market. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, what do we do? Right? Now, let me move this up one time frame up. Okay? I want to investigate if this is up, then what's up with this going down? I don't understand. I must investigate. 
Okay, doesn't mean become seller, doesn't mean hit the buy aggressively, investigate. So let's investigate, four hours, here we go. Here we go, let's find the line that I drew. Let's wait for my MAs to show up, there we go. Okay, now in this sense, take a look at this market. It's upwards, the MAs seem to hold balance, 20, 50, they're holding balance. I'm not using it to trade. I wanna remind you of that. So don't get into it like, oh, Naveen told me the secret, 20 MA, 50 MA, 200 MA, now I'm rich, baby. Uh, don't, don't, don't go, don't, don't lose balance. Stay, stay calm, okay? Highest point in the sky? Who's the guy who started it? Who made that buy? This fella. Are we in a seller's market? No. Are we in a seller's? No. Are we in a seller's? No. Are we in a seller's? Yes. Stand by. Stand by. We have now approached a seller's market. Stand by. Do not touch this trade. Stand by. But the flow maintains. Remember the angle up. Can you guys tell me, based on that pen story I told you, how is the angle up? What kind of people are fighting for this? Are they crazy rabid dogs saying, I'm like, I can't wait to get this? Or are they more like, oh, eh, if I get a good deal, I'll buy it. I do want it, but if I get a good deal, I'll buy it. Or are they like, I will kill the next guy, but I will get it first. Are they in that mode or are they more in a passive mode of yeah. if I get a good deal? Yeah, yeah, why, why not? You know, they, they, they become French. I'm like, oh, may, may, may we, uh, why not? You know, <laughs> it's like, so you have to understand this. Okay. So now you're understanding that, okay, they're going to be a little bit more calm about this. And then suddenly, guy who started it's here. What happened? A buyer shows up full caliber right in front of their face. The market switched back. So anyone from a smaller time frame who was looking at this saying, am I supposed to sell? You can't. You can't sell. If you sell, you're playing with fire because what's the thing you said in the beginning of, of the webinar? You know that the that the game is played by the larger players, the big boys. If the big boy is clearly telling you, I want to buy, why are you trying to be his victim by trying to sell? Don't sell. Anything that is sold, he looks at it as, ah, I got the good deal. I'll buy it. Are you the deal for him if you sell? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what just happened is you now have a sense of understanding of whatever that mess I saw on the daily, buyer's market, buyer's market. And it's nothing else but buyer's market. I need to put my focus in buy patterns. Whatever your pattern is, if you're a pattern junkie, stay by pattern. Your, your odds of you winning increase when you have the big boys saying, Let's go, kid. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going that way. You want to come? It's this way. If you go against me, I'll chop your head off. You understand that? Let's go, kid. I'm going that way. If you're heading that way too, then I'll buy it off of you for a more premium price in the future. If I need 100 pens and I know you have two of them, then you will say, oh, uh, uh, Mr. Big Boy, I bought this for 189 price. Um, can you give me 189.50? The big boy will say, how many pieces? Two. Here's your money. Shut up. Get out of my way. That's how you get paid. You play with the larger players. You don't scam, skimp golem style and say, I'm going to liquidity here. I'm going to liquidity there. Watch me uh, stop fighting robots. You're playing an algorithm game if you're going to do it like that. You're fighting robots. It's a dead end game, zero sum game. You said at the beginning of the webinar, you understand it's a big players game. Why don't you understand what the big, big players are doing? And use that to your advantage and saying, that's the wind behind my back. That's how I surf in the right direction. That's how I position myself that... 
Even if I did my analysis a little bit wrong, I'll get that push from them saying, ah, I got you, kid. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going that way. You coming? I'm going that way. I hope you guys understand now if this is, is it, is it clicking? Can I get some fire icons, aha moments, like, subscribe, whatever you guys do to, to, to tell me it's clicking. You understand this. It's going into your mind. Now you're able to move away from, I don't know which direction I should be trading this thing. I don't know if it's up. Is it down? Is it sideways? Now you have a little bit more clear understanding. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Buyer's market. Got it. End of story. Okay. Now what we'll do, let's switch it up. Let's go to another example. Okay. Let's do another example because now you need examples. You need examples. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do another one. Let's go to, let's say Euro USD. Let's find something crazy. Let's find something messy. Okay. Here, look at this. All right. Okay. So who's going to pull their hair out first? Is this an uptrend, downtrend, sideways? Okay. Let's see the hairs. Let's see the hairs. Who's pulling their hair out? Okay, so um, one of you guys are saying, so Amar Sana, you're saying we need how to enter strategy. I'm going to be honest with you right now. I can give you an entry strategy in less than five minutes, but I can promise you in one minute, you're going to fail. And I can show you that same strategy. I'll do it. It'll make money. You need to understand what game you're playing before you focus on Oh, so you mean uh, this moment I'm supposed to buy? Okay, okay. How do I buy that? Show me how to do it. How do you know it's supposed to be a buy and not a sell? First, you need to figure that out before you say, how do I enter? How do I enter is later. Okay. How do I enter is later. Okay. So some of you guys are saying uptrend, down, possible bottoming. It started sideways, daily sell, lower time frame, already long. <laughs> okay, you see, you guys are in the chat yourselves. Those of you guys who are watching the recording, I'm reading them out loud. Those of you guys who are here live, look at the chat. It's confusion, it's chaos, right? So now let's take a look at this. Okay, from what do you understand from the prices with the smaller MAs, the 20, the 50, which is 20 candles ago, which is, Four hours times 20. Uh, okay, so approximately like a week, right? And then 50 EMA, four hours times 50. Okay, so it looks like they were down, but they seem to keep going above the MA. But then I got this big gigantic kahuna, the 200 MA, the big mammoth, saying, they're angled downwards. I don't get it. So how we do this, instead of saying, is it down? Is it sideways? Is it up? Instead of guessing all of that stuff, we say, I can feel the MA angle. I need to investigate. So how do you investigate? You go up one. Okay, you go to the daily and you're at the daily now. Okay, how do you investigate? What are you looking at this as? Up, down, sideways? I don't seem to have a flow here. Is this up? Is this sideways? How are we going above and below the MAs? Are we going up above the MAs clearly? Are we going below the MAs clearly? Are we just going up and down through the MAs as if we're like sticking our head out like whack-a-mole? What are we doing? So some of you guys are saying go to a higher time frame. Okay, if I go to a weekly, what are we doing? Are we going up and down from the MAs? What are we doing? So what does this mean? What does this mean? I want you guys to now, before you answer, before you answer, oh, it means range. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Not in my webinars. Don't do that. Don't label things. I want you to understand what does that mean? What, what just happened? What does that mean? What you just saw? I don't want to know what is the vocabulary for what just happened. I know the vocabulary, right? I, I, I bloody wrote the book on it, right? So I know it's a range, okay? I've been there, done that. I know it's a range. What does it mean? It means nobody wants to buy the bloody pen. 
Why are you buying or selling the pen? Nobody wants it. If no one wants to buy it, or if no one wants to get rid of it, what are you doing in Euro USD? You're playing a losing game now. Uh, you can do Golem. Right? You can do Golem. Man, precious. I'm going to take an inch here, a pip here, a pip there. You can do that. You know, you can, you can work for the broker if you want and just pay him fees and fees and fees. But, or you can be smart about it and saying, Euro USD, next. I don't want Euro USD. It's a waste of my time. If the larger player doesn't have a sense of direction of what he wants to do with it, then how can you? Remember in the beginning of the webinar, you told me the game is played by the larger player. You told me this. Internally, you know it, but externally, you haven't actually accepted it and actually internalized that with your inside and outside and saying, what I do outside reflects what I believe inside. So inside, you feel it, you know it, but outside, you're doing hanky-panky, right? How many of you guys right now just at least had an aha moment just there and saying, that's how you do pair selection. Okay, so now when you deal with Euro USD because of this type of situation, you will notice the buys don't work. You will notice when the buys don't work, what are you going to do? I think it's a sell. You'll switch to the sell side and then the sells don't work. And after doing this two to three times, you finally say, you know what? You throw your stuff down on the floor and like, I'm done. You know, trading is not for me. It's ridiculous. Now tell me, is it a psychology problem? What just happened? Is it a psychology? You're buying when you're supposed to sell. You're selling when you're supposed to buy. Tell me, is it a psychology problem? Do you need to read another psychological book? It's not a psychology problem. It's an understanding problem. Okay? It's an understanding problem. You're unaware the game you're playing at. You've, you haven't internalized, if I'm playing with the larger player, the larger player is not even here. The larger player is not even saying if he wants it or not. Once I can get a sniff of what he wants it, I can get to work. I can get to work because I know he'll pay, right? I know he'll pay. So now let's move it on to a different example. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, take a look at this one. Swiss franc yen, okay? Now when you look at this thing, this is a weekly chart, okay? This is a weekly chart. Forget what you see in front of your screen. Look at this pen in front of me and tell me, what you just saw, Swiss franc yen, just at a glimpse of an eye, do they want it? Do they want to buy this pen? Or do they want to sell that pen? You tell me just by looking at this and saying, do you want to be the sucker seller on this? Or do you want to stick your neck on the buy side only? It's more fun when you're live. Those of you guys who are watching the recording, you need to attend these things live. You know, it's, just, it, it's, it's a different feeling when you're here live, okay? So hopefully if you're watching the recording, I, I truly hope you start attending these things live. Those of you guys who are here live, different vibe, right? When you're here live, rather than just watching it, just you're, you're fast forwarding. Where's the answer? Where's the answer? Where does he talk about the entry? Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Where's the entry? <laughs> right? It's, it's like that. It's like, I, have a, I just want to know the answer. I don't want to listen to all this. I don't want to know what, what, it ha what it has to do with the pen. Why does it keep pointing to a pen? Where's the answer? Where's the chart answer? Right? <laughs> okay. But at least those of you guys who are here live, your effort pays off because you understand, because you're not fast forwarding through the webinar. You understand. Like, ah, sneaky little brown guy on the internet. He's teaching me these things by making me sit here and listen to all this stuff. Okay. It's starting to click, right? Okay, now, if you want to stay on the buy side and you know the client wants to buy it, but you, just like this portion that I showed you, I'm going to show you a cool thing here. Take a look. Here we go. I'm going to take you down to the four hours, two time frames down. There we go. Where is that little arrow? Prior to that arrow, 
that that line, sorry, not arrow, line that I have, notice the guy who started it. You see this, but you see it used to be above the MAs. Now it's below the MAs. Now it's going above the MAs. Now it's going below the MAs. So what do you do? What do you do instead of saying, oh, I, I don't like Swiss Yen. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't like Swiss Yen. Uh, next, I, I, I quit. What do you do? What's the word? You investigate. Good. Now, upon investigation, you're going to come to a clear understanding of they want to buy this. They want to buy this. So when you see these things crashing, don't touch it. When you see these things crashing, how strong is this seller in your opinion? How strong is that seller? Is that seller like, oh my goodness, like super strong, right? And if I get you a nice Fibonacci 50% retracement where you look at that Fibonacci and like, oh, I am bathing in a perfect, in a perfect 50% pullback. I'm bathing in it. This is a perfect sell. Sell the house, sell the grandma, sell the dog, sell the cars. And I want to put everything on the sell because this is a sell, baby. Is it a sell? That perfection, that pattern perfection. Is it a sell? Right? If you understand what the big boy wants, then you need to operate and be humble and saying, I need to help him. Instead of, I think this is a sell, therefore I'm going to sell and the world better do what I want. You got to leave that ego aside. You got to leave that ego aside. You need to understand what they're doing. Help them. If they want to buy, position yourself in the buy appropriately and then saying, um, Mr. Big Boy, I bought these at a certain price. If I offload them a little bit later to you, can you give me a higher price? If you hit the sell button, your order will be filled. Okay, it will be filled because they're dying to buy it. They're dying. They want it. They really, really want it. Your order will get filled. Normally, you guys don't experience this order not filled in Forex as much because the quantity you guys are trading, you will never really experience order not filled. If you go to the stock market and you choose a less liquid pair and you try to buy it at the wrong time or at the time where it's busy, it's going to say order not filled because everybody is trying to do that. All the professionals are trying to do that. You're not going to get an order filled. And those who do get their order filled, the big boy is saying, give it to me, kid. I'll pay you extra for it. Give it to me. You don't need it. I need it more than you do. You're just trying to make a quick buck. Here's a little bit more. Thank you for your efforts, kid. You wanted $2, here's four. That's the ones when you when you hit the buy and you realize, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's because you're, you're trying to go with the larger players. Does that make sense? So now, if you see an MAs like this, does that mean Naveen is doing something and he's probably buying when the price crosses the MA? Is that what's happening? No, 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 no. So I'm using the MAs not because I rely on the indicators. I'm using the MAs to give me a shortcut glimpse on what are they thinking? What are they thinking? Do they want to buy? Do they want to sell? How should I position myself? If this is a buy on the weekly, how long should I wait and come back? Maybe two weeks later, I'll come back and see, hey, are you guys back? Do you guys need help? Let me help you on the buy side. It was temporary sell. I know. Um, I, I understand. I was not there also because it's a waste of time. But uh, lots, of, lots of monkeys were selling during that period, and there's a lot of orders floating around. Shall we take them now? Why don't you take them first, Mr. Big Boy? I'll take your lead. And as they take... The position saying guy who started it or sorry this is not a lower low so that's not the guy who started it, sorry the guy who started it, it's here so you say mr big boy i will take your lead i know you want to buy this as the buying begins and you start taking them out 
I will take your lead and I will sense your back and I will help you buy. I'll take your lead. You start the game. I'll join the game. You start the game. I'll join the game. I won't guess that you're coming because I don't know. So I want you to start the engine and I'll hop along. Does that make sense now? Is it clicking? Don't guess. It's actually not so difficult. If you really understand the game, it's not so difficult. Trading is nothing but an agency game. If you help the big boys, you get paid. Otherwise, what are you doing with hitting a buy and hitting a sell? How do you imagine why you should get paid? What are you doing that's of any value? Why should you get paid? There's a reason why when you win, you get paid. When you lose, then they take it from you. If you position yourself right, you're winning increases. You're winning increases. Does that make sense? Aha moments? Aha moments? Yeah? Is it clicking? So now I'm, I'm sure by tomorrow, if I look through YouTube or I look through TradingView, everyone's going to have three MAs. <laughs> There's going to be the 20, the 50, the 200. Now, why do I choose the 20, 50, 200? I pulled it out of my butt. It's a random number I chose because I feel that feels comfortable to me. But when someone says, you got to use 17, you got to use eight. Oh, okay. It's not that it's wrong or it's right. It's just, okay, I just want an overview. Are they buying or are they not buying? That's all I care about. Now, whether that means 8 EMA, 9, 9.76222 EMA, I really don't care. Angle up, good enough for me. Thank you very much. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I'm having so much fun doing these webinars with you guys. I love doing these things live. It's so much more fun. So much more fun. Okay. Okay. Now, let's get back into this thing. Now, what, what you need to do, let's reel it all in. Reel it all in. Okay. Bring it all in. Okay. Bring it all in. So, what are you going to do with M uh, MAs? MAs are useful. They can be a guide. Now, are MAs things to enter? No. They're not tools for you to use to enter. That's why indicator for me still is no. Because when people say, Naveen, do you use indicators? I all already imagine they're saying, how are you using indicators to enter the market? That's the question they're really asking. And the answer to that is no. Now, can I ask you guys one question? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you guys in a way I know it's going to make sense for you immediately. Okay. Let, let's say you're a male. Okay, you're a male, you're walking down the street and a female walks by. Okay, you're walking down the street, female walks by. In your mind, when you say, ooh, she's beautiful, or ooh, um, okay. How long do you process that information? How long does it take? If you're a girl, and you see a dude walk by and, and then you see him walk by and you're like, oh. How long does it take you to be like, that's a, that's a good looking dude? Or do you pull out the calculator and be like, let me, uh, okay, well, if his eyebrows are two inches higher and then uh, according to the Fibonacci, 50% pullback, if it's 2% lower, it takes seconds, seconds. So when I ask you, when you look at a chart and I ask you a question, do they want it? It should take you seconds to answer that question rather than saying, oh, you know, give me like 45 minutes. Let me let me try to understand this stuff because I can't figure out an angle. All you have to do is figure out an angle and you're like, I got it. There needs to be an angle in the market, either this way or this way. Find an angle and make sure your MAs and all that stuff sort of line up to that angle, and then you got it. It shouldn't take you all this time to be like, oh my God, that girl was so beautiful, but give me 30 minutes, let me solve this. All right, her clothes were like this, and her hair was like this, her eyebrows were like this. Oh yeah, yeah, the formula says she was hot. 
<laughs> it's like, according to the formula, yes. Intrinsically, you know when you see a good market. You know it. That's what you want to attract yourself to. Okay? And you want proof. Who are the who are the kids who are the most attracted to GameStop, Bitcoin? Because that view, intrinsically, they're attracted to it because it tells them it's going a certain way. I need to join this wave. It's very quick for them to be like, oh, that, that looks good. Me too. Make sense? Okay. Now, how many of you guys in this room have been from the beginning of the webinar all the way till the last minute of this webinar? How many of you guys can say, I'm with you, crazy man. From the moment you start till the moment the webinar ends, I am not leaving. I've been with you. I don't, I, I, I don't even go to the bathroom. <laughs> it's like... The, the whole whole point of all this is I want to make sure that if you're sitting here with me for an hour, let's have fun together, obviously. But at the same time, let's make sure that you don't walk away from the webinar ever from my webinars where you're saying, I, I don't know what I was doing there for an hour. It felt like Netflix. I sat there, but I didn't really learn anything. You know, that's my side of things. I want to make sure whenever you come to any of my webinars, you're like, Holy moly, I get it. I can apply this right now instead of, oh, I, I, that makes sense. Yeah, I'll apply it when I get to it. No, I, I want you to be excited about it and be like, I want to apply it now. Right? Okay, good. So a lot of you guys are saying, uh, I am with you all along. I went to the bathroom with the laptop. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Um, some of you guys saying old student for 10 years. Excellent. Welcome, welcome. Um, oh, uh, controversial question. So all the SMC was wrong all this time. I'll leave it to you. I'll leave it to you. Okay, you work hard enough, you figure it out. I'll leave it to you. Okay. All right, wonderful gentlemen. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Those of you guys who are in the course, uh, you know, things are going to get a little bit more intense over there. Those of you guys who are not part of, part of Urban Forex, I urge you to look into Urban Forex and see what we have to offer. It will change the way you trade. If a webinar like this changes the way you think, imagine what our courses can do for you. Okay. Of course, well, well, let me shed some light on that. The webinars are one hour long. The videos and the courses are more short to the point. It's like, let's get to it. Next. Let's get to it. Next. So it's a little bit more streamlined. This is because there are many of you guys like, I want it. I'm hungry. I want the information now. So we developed it in that sense. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, some of you guys are saying my boss is catching me. Okay. So I'm going to leave you guys to it. Thank you so much for coming in. As always, this is fun. Um, it's been wonderful to hang out with you guys. Until next time, gentlemen, if anything, reach out to us, info at urbanforex.com. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Until next time. Cheers. Bye for now.